Hey, what is up, YouTube? If you are new to my YouTube channel, first of all, welcome. My name is Mr. Kyle Cohen. I'm a fourth grade teacher in Cleveland, Ohio, and it is summer break. I don't know about you, but towards the end of the school year, everything is just full chaos. My home is out of control. My classroom's out of control. My virtual computer digital space is out of control. And I really like to take this time at the beginning of the summer to get organized and to just get everything back on track. I just spent some time organizing my laptop, getting all of my digital files together, and I thought I would film a sit down what is on my MacBook video. I am provided with a school district computer. I personally choose to use my own personal computer. Again, this is a completely unnecessary piece of equipment to be an effective teacher. I just use this computer because I have it and I just like having everything all in one place. So I'm gonna take you into all all of the things that go into my laptop. Make sure to leave a comment down below sharing anything that you find really useful for your own personal life or for your teaching or your classroom. Leave a comment down below sharing all of the things and let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to walk you through everything in order of how it appears on my dock. So first you will see the mail application. The mail application is my application of choice that comes with with the Mac products. It's also the same application that I use on my phone, and I really love how everything is so streamlined. I have my personal, my work, my grad school, and my Mr. Kyle Cohen YouTube emails all in one place. You'll notice here that I do not have any emails in my inbox. I operate under a email zero inbox system. Basically what that means is my email inbox serves as a running to-do list. When an email comes in that I need to act upon, that I need to respond to, it stays in my inbox until I complete that task, until I respond to that email, and then it is either deleted or filed away into its appropriate folder. So for my personal emails, I have this important folder where anything will go. Same thing for my grad school email and my Mr. Kyle Cohen email. I just use that one important folder for anything that I wanna hold onto, but I don't necessarily need in my inbox right now. For my teaching job, I have an important folder just like the other three. I then have a curriculum folder, a PD folder, and a miscellaneous folder. Those are all self-explanatory. My family folder is where I keep any sort of email exchange that I have with families of the students that are in my class. I find it's really important for me to keep a running record of any of these conversations just to refer back to or if I ever need them down the road. You'll then see this summer 2021 folder, which is where I'm keeping everything for summer school. I am serving as my district's summer school principal, and I'm just keeping anything important that I need for that program right here in that folder. Some of you might think I'm crazy for having a zero email inbox, but it just works for me. And if you are having a hard time keeping up with your email, I suggest trying it out. I think it works great. The next application you will see is my calendar. My calendar is organized in the same way as my email inbox. You will find that I have my different folders for my different categories. So I have my personal, my work, and an other. Let's say I have a dentist appointment. I will go ahead and I will put it on my calendar. Obviously it will not be at 2.15 in the morning. Let's say it's at eight in the morning. And then this is filed under random. This will look different for, let's say something that I have at work versus something that I have not at work. Everything has a specific color. It is filed correctly. And again, setting this up ahead of time makes it really easy for when I I am at work and a meeting comes up and I need to put on my calendar, I know exactly what to do when that all happens. And I love that this application keeps it all in one place, all on my computer, which I can also access from my phone. Next up, we have Google Chrome. Google Chrome is my browser of choice for all things internet access. Google Chrome is awesome because of the bookmarks and because of my ability to sync it with my Google Drive. As you see, I don't really keep anything on my desktop. I don't really keep any files on my computer because all of my files are stored on Google Drive. My Google Drive is organized into three main folders and then these folders have 
more folders in the folders. Again, it's just what works for me. So I have a miscellaneous folder, a planning folder, and a summer school folder. And then you'll see my fourth grade website for next school year, which you can't see quite yet. That will be coming in a future video. But let's take my planning folder, for example. I keep all of my lessons, my activities, and my resources in this folder organized by quarter and then organized by the week. I have tried all sorts of systems for when it comes to organizing my lessons and my materials for teaching. I found that this one works best. I've tried organizing it by the subject like math, reading, science, social studies, that sort of thing. But for me, it's really nice to fall on the weeks because when I am teaching that week, I can go see what I used the year before or two years before in that folder. I can then pull that resource if I like it, I can make it better, I can enhance it, and it helps to have it broken down by the week, but again, it just, that's what works for me. As I said before, I also really love the bookmarks that you are able to have on Google Chrome. I don't have them organized in any particular order. I really like just having the icon because I can fit more things on the bookmark bar that are visible that I can click on. So for example here, I could click on my Google Drive or I can click on StoryWorks, which is a site that we use a lot, or Flocabulary, right? Anything like that. I have at just a click of a button. So it's really nice having those. And then I have some websites that I don't use as frequently in this educational sites folder. I have a miscellaneous folder where I keep documents that I constantly am in need of that I refer to. And then I have two documents here. One was for my internship. I actually just finished my internship, so I could probably delete this one right now. I was serving as an administrative intern at my school. As I've shared, I am hoping to become a principal, so I was like doing my student teaching, but for being a principal. So that is just where I kept all of my notes on meetings I attended, projects I completed, those sorts of things. And then I have a, another Google Doc called Notebook. This is a running notebook that I use in a virtual setting. Again, I really love that I can have this on my personal computer, on my work computer, on my phone. And this is just a running notebook as you would a physical bullet journal or notebook. I just love having it digitally. For me, I have any meetings that I go to, whether it's an IEP meeting or a faculty meeting or a PLC, right? Whatever the meeting is, I have it all in one place on this document. I'll put the date, the meeting, and have all of those notes from various meetings in one place. Next up, you will see my Messages app, which is the same application that is on my phone. It just makes texting a little bit easier than doing it on your thumbs. If you really wanna get going, you can uh, type it out. So highly recommend that. And then I have Spotify. You cannot judge the playlists in my Spotify. <laughs> I have all different kinds of playlists that I recommend for the classroom. The first one is this Lo-Fi Beats playlist. This Lo-Fi Beats playlist is just really relaxing, calm background music that I play in the classroom when students are working independently. Another one that I really love for when students are working independently is this instrumental playlist called Pop Goes Classical. Students love this playlist. It's really popular pop songs that students know. I'll often catch them humming along or singing along, which is totally fine by me. Spotify also has some really great pre-generated morning playlists. We love this morning classical, the Wake Up Gently, the Coffee and Piano. These are playlists that I typically play when students are entering the classroom in the morning. Really helps sets the mood and gets everyone nice and relaxed and calm and energized for the upcoming day ahead. So we always have these playing in the classroom every morning. And the final application that you will find on the dock here is my notes application. My notes are sorted in different folders. So this first one is all of my notes. Then I have one called notes, which is like what doesn't really fit somewhere else. Then I have a work one, a Mr. Kyle Cohen one for the YouTube channel, in archive, which is when I don't wanna delete a note, but I don't need it in one of the other folders, so I just throw it in there. Again, this system works for me, but these notes are just really great to have, again, on my computer and on my phone. This first one is my shopping list, so you will see that I need cinnamon and ranch and other essentials. And then I have an upcoming videos note. You see my classroom 2021-2022 note. 
That note is for when I am going about my life over the summer and then I see something on Instagram or on YouTube or when I'm out at a store and it like triggers an idea that I want to implement into my classroom for next school year, I will throw it on that note so that when I head back to school in August, all of those notes are just in one place so I can then look through them and think what I'm going to implement and what just was too grand of an idea that is unrealistic at that time. That is an overview of everything that I have on my computer when it comes to my teaching. There are obviously other applications that I use when it comes to making YouTube videos and other things in my more like personal life, but these are the apps that I use when it comes to my daily teaching. What sort of things do you find most effective for you as a teacher. Again, leave a comment down below sharing out any awesome resources that you are aware of so that all of us can learn from you. Also, if you have not done so already, hit that red subscription button down below. We are really close to hitting 10,000 subscribers, which is just a crazy cool milestone that I so appreciate all of you helping me out with. Thank you, as always, for being here, watching these videos, and supporting the YouTube channel. It means so much to me. I don't even have the words to articulate it, but I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Thanks again for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.